Life of Pi, Summaries of Chapters 91 to 94. Chapter 91. Pi explores the Frenchman's boat. Pi calls it his brother's boat. Pi discovers that the man had lied to him. Pi finds some food and some water on the boat. Pi eats and drinks. Then Pi returns to his own lifeboat and releases the Frenchman's. When Pi had cried, his eyes had improved. Pi begins rinsing his eyes with seawater regularly. Within two days, his vision returns. The first thing that Pi sees is the butchered, dismembered body of the Frenchman. Since the tiger had eaten the face, Pi does not know who Richard Parker's victim is. Pi says the man's empty and open torso looks like the lifeboat. Pi takes one of the arms to use pieces of for bait. Pi eats some of the pieces, but only until he catches a fish. Pi says he prays for the dead Frenchman every day. Chapter 92 Pi makes a botanical discovery that he says many will not believe. He sees trees with pale bark and green leaves on a low-lying island. At first, Pi doesn't believe his eyes. Pi looks at the island and thinks it is an illusion. There is no soil, just tubular vegetation and trees. Pi thinks that if he closes his eyelids, they will be like lumberjacks and cut down the trees. He is surprised when he opens his eyes that he can still see the trees. Pi loves the color green after only seeing blue. He says it is the color of Islam. Pi remembers that the lifeboat's manual said he would only know land if his foot touched it. Pi slowly puts his foot into the water and steps down on rubbery but solid and fragrant vegetation. My God, my God, Richard Parker, land, land, we are saved. Pi reaches down and pulls up this strange tubular seaweed. It had an inner and an outer tube. The outer tube was edible, sugary, and delicious. Pi hurriedly pulled up the seaweed algae with both hands and ate and ate. Pi crawls to the shade of a tree. Pi's tree had gray-green bark and chordate leaves. Chordate means heart-shaped. After a while, Richard Parker leaves the boat and heads inland. Pi ties up the boat and decides, for safety, he should spend the night in the lifeboat. During the night, Richard Parker returns and acts strangely, meowing and licking the pads of his feet. Pi wonders why the tiger has returned to the lifeboat. Pi doesn't think about it too much because his stomach is cramping painfully. Finally, Pi is able to defecate and has the best night's sleep since the sinking of the Simsum. The next day, Richard Parker does not want to leave the boat, but finally does in the middle of the morning. Pi spends the day getting his strength back and relearning how to walk on solid ground. Pi spends another night on the boat and is able to walk to his tree, falling many times. Pi uses his gaff to pull some leaves from the tree. He tries to eat some, but they are too bitter. The tiger, now much stronger, gallops back at sunset, scaring Pi into blowing his whistle. The tiger stops, but is very upset. Surprisingly, Richard Parker jumps not at Pi, but into the sea. Richard Parker swims to the lifeboat and pulls himself in. Each night, the tiger sleeps in the boat. One morning, Pi feels strong enough to explore the island. He goes inland and finds trees, ponds, and diurnal, active during the day, meerkats, everywhere. The meerkats had no fear of Pi. They continued their squeaking and barking. Then they jumped into a pond and began pulling out dead fish. Pi saw four ponds, all with dead dorados and other fish. Pi tasted the water. It was fresh, not salt water, so the salt water fish had died. How had they gotten there? Pi took a long, refreshing bath. The algae had desalinated the water, and it was pure. The meerkats had no idea what a predator was. Countless numbers of them were killed and eaten by Richard Parker. Pi discovers that weather affects the height and density of the island. Both are increased with heat and decreased with cool, rainy weather and high seas. Pi experiences a storm, but the island survives it well. It was like Gandhi. It did not resist. Pi does not understand the ecology of the island. Why are there only meerkats, saltwater fish, trees, and algae? There are no other signs of life, no flies, worms, or freshwater fish. There is no soil. Pi sees that the trees are not rooted in the algae, but are part of it. Pi decides that the island is really a floating organism. Pi becomes afraid of Richard Parker, who is now healthy and is prowling the island to look for a mate. One day, Pi and the tiger almost run into each other as they are exploring. 
Pye says there are three fears that always remain for humans, being startled by a sound, vertigo, and being advanced on by a killer. Three times the tiger rears up as if to attack, but then backs away. Pye blows his whistle loudly for a long time. Pye decides it is time to be a circus animal trainer again. Pye knows that animals act only as a result of instinct or repetition. Using bits of meerkats and his whistle, Pye retrains the Omega Tiger to see Pye as an alpha. Once Pye has trained the tiger to jump through a homemade hoop, he feels more comfortable. Pye decides, though, that he will sleep on the island in a tree, just in case Richard Parker changes his routine of staying on the lifeboat at night. Pye makes a bed by using a net, blankets, a rope, and two branches. He is surprised at dusk when all of the meerkats leave the ground and climb into the trees. Pye enjoyed sleeping with the meerkats cuddling up to him. One night they woke him up. He looked at the pond and saw a lot of dead fish floating up to the top of the water. The meerkats made a lot of noise, but not one left the trees. The next morning, most of the fish were gone before the meerkats could get down to the pond. What had happened to all the fish? There had even been a dead shark. Pye finally discovered what happened to the fish when one day he saw a tree that appeared to have fruit. Later, Pye wished he had never climbed the tree and opened the fruit. If he had not, he could have lived on with the meerkats. The fruit, not really a fruit, just a ball of leaves, contained a human tooth. Pye opened more balls of leaves and found a human tooth in each. That night, he pushed a meerkat to the ground and it squealed and ran back up the tree. Pye lowered himself to the ground with a rope, and when his feet touched the ground, they burned, and Pye was in agony. Pye tried everything to ease his pain. He washed his feet with a bucket of water he kept hanging in the tree. He wiped off his feet with leaves. He even killed two meerkats and washed his feet in blood. Pye thinks the island is carnivorous. During the day, the delicious algae attracts living creatures. At night, the algae turns acidic and consumes its prey. That is why the fish died, the meerkats spent the night in trees, Richard Parker always returned to the lifeboat, and why there were human teeth in the leaf balls Pye had found in a tree. Someone besides Pye had found the island and had died there. Pye thinks about the other person. The one who had died on the island, consumed slowly by a tree which apparently was also acidic but needed more than one night to have any effect. Pye wonders how long it takes despair to kill someone. If the island gives you food, water, and shelter but no hope for a normal life, what then? Pye asks, how much stored up conversation died unsaid? Pye finds it unbearable that out of all the other person's hopes and dreams, only teeth are left. Pye decides to leave the island to search for other humans. He had been so happy to have had the companionship and conversation of the Frenchman. He had been relieved to find the food, water, shelter, and meerkats on the island. But Pye needed both physical comfort and spiritual fulfillment to truly live. Pye prepares to leave. He eats as much algae as he can. He fills the lifeboat with water, dead fish, and the flesh of meerkats. He attaches a mass of algae to the boat with a rope. Pye waits for evening to come and for Richard Parker to return to the lifeboat, and then he pushes off and lets the currents take the boat away from the island. The algae turns acidic and eats through the rope. By morning, there is no sign of the island. Chapter 93. Pye lives, but he says, The rest of this story is nothing but grief, ache, and endurance. Pye says that during low times, people need to reach out to God. During high times, people do not. Chapter 94 Pye reaches land, Mexico. He is almost too weak and tired to even be happy. It had been hard battling the surf with his sea anchors. He barely has enough strength to climb out of the boat. As Pye gathers his strength to climb out, Richard Parker jumps over him and disappears into the jungle without even looking back. Pye says... Richard Parker, companion of my torment, awful fierce thing that kept me alive, moved forward and disappeared from my life. Pye now feels completely abandoned. No family, no tiger, no God? Yes, the beach sand is God's cheek and he must be smiling. Some hours later, a man finds Pye. He goes and gets help. Several people, covering their mouths and noses, come and take Pye to a house where he is bathed and fed. Pye cried when he was taken from the beach, not with happiness, but because he was unable to say goodbye to Richard Parker. 
Pai says he needs order, that he does not like his own nickname because there is no goodbye in a never-ending number. Pai says it is important in life to conclude things properly. Only then can you let go. Pai also wonders if it would be possible to tell his jumbled story in exactly 100 chapters. Pai wishes he could have thanked Richard Parker. He wishes he could warn him, watch out for man, he is not your friend. The next day, a policeman came and took Pai to a hospital. Pai says, and there my story ends. Pai thanks the poor people who took him in and gave him food and clothes, the Mexican doctors and nurses, and the Mexican and Canadian officials who helped him get to Canada, where he lived with a foster mother and later attended the University of Toronto. Note, Martel's novel does not end here. Part 3 is going to make you think, wonder, and choose.